um, I'm just happy and grateful that I got a chance to you know share my work here um, and so the whole VizDev team is showcased here in this book but here's my section I talk about Baby Groot and how I designed Baby Groot and just how I, I painted it uh, like a little step-by-step -step version here's the little approved design I, uh, I got in Guardians of the Galaxy 1 My name is Anthony Francisco and I'm a senior visual development artist at Marvel Studios. I am from the Philippines and now I work out of Burbank, California. Well, growing up in the Philippines, uh, I was always an active kid, I guess, uh, really full of imagination and not so good at school, really. I'm a C student, C minus student. <laughs> and it's always been something that's, um, that seems to always be what gets me in trouble a lot. And uh, at school, I would uh, daydream sometimes while class is happening. Uh, this is one story that I had that I, I often tell because it's just so funny. I think this is why uh, movies really affected me a lot is because watching Star Wars, I had this one uh, dream while the class was going on and I imagined myself as the creature that swallowed the, you know, the Millennium Falcon and I, my, my mouth was open and I was holding my mouth open like this trying to save the Millennium Falcon uh, and the next thing I woke up because the teacher's like looking down at me and say, like, what are you doing, Francisco? It's like, ah, nothing, nothing, I'm just dreaming. I didn't realize, I think, we're living in a third world country. I think we were not, we were not wealthy. So I did know we were poor. I think that's what, um, but I guess not too poor, or maybe that's just me not realizing we were, you know, because, uh, um, because when I was when I was younger, I didn't have uh, toys, much toys. So what I would do is, what I would do is I would draw on paper and I would cut them up and play them like action figures. So that's my toy. That's how I uh, get myself entertained, I guess. Once I found out there's a comic book store close to my school, I would be there all the time. And it was a clothing store. It's called Phil Bars. If you're familiar, uh, but people in the Philippines, but it was a clothing store at first, and the comic books were just a small section. And next thing that there's more and more comic books, the clothing stores are going away because more people are buying comic books, and that's where I, uh, the community that I met other people there. But I didn't talk so much, and I didn't have money actually to buy the comic books, so I would just look at the comics, and just memorize each one, maybe bring a sketchbook and kind of copy it. That's how I kind of trained myself. I was just so obsessed with art. In my case, I almost didn't get to come here, you know, because I was going to be 18. I was still 17 and then I turned 18. Um, so we were not sure if, uh, if that I would make it here, then I would be stuck in, in the Philippines. So what happened was we were worried about me not being able to go to the United States because I was almost the age that, that you can go, I guess. Um, but uh, on my, the side of my father's side, they had uh, petitioned us, I think, I don't know if it's multiple times or they had to renew it and, and we've been waiting like 14 years or so or 13 years for the petition to go through. Um, and, and we were worried, you know, time's ticking and finally the day came where my dad was like, wow, we, we're, we're going to the United States. I was like, whoa, really? I was like, it's hopefully... It, I think it was like perfect timing. I still remember how my dad was so careful with little things, you know, like he's very careful with little things, things that don't, you don't think would make anybody angry. But when we're doing the interview, he said, you know, sit up straight, like talk like, cause we're gonna be the new citizens coming to the United States and we have to be respectful and all that stuff, you know, and not like we weren't, but we were extra like, everything has to be, this is our only chance, our last chance, or 
um, one in a million chance to come here and um, the little things people take for granted you know is it becomes so magnified like when you're an immigrant coming here stepping out of the plane for the first time I noticed the cold air and it just felt uh, different and the smell of the air also felt like I'm in a different land you know my uncle picked us up and I think I still remember him having a, a nice Mercedes Benz you know it's like and the smell of that leather it just felt like something just very different very new and when we got to the place we were gonna stay first um, and, and and then it really set set in that I am in America Growing up because of the gang violence back then in 92, that was the height, I think, of a lot of the gang violence, even Filipino gangs. And that was my world a little bit uh, when I was playing basketball. I met a lot of those kind of um, people. I was not in the gang, uh, but I was around those kind of people. So there's always a danger of drive-by shootings and stuff like that. And and we would hear that, you know, even stopped in the stoplight, one person got shot close to uh, where, where I lived uh, in LA. Um, so even when I drive, I'm always ready to go at the stoplight, you know? Although there was a lot of gang violence around me, I was able to find the right friends that um, kind of distracted me from uh, being around the people I'm not supposed to be with. Um, also doing art and comic books. Actually, there's a comic book store I would frequent that I met people there, uh, but I, I actually didn't talk to many people. I just like put my head in the comic books and just kind of disappeared into that world. Um, I, but I think one of the biggest things that really took me away from it was when I joined the Navy. And then that really took me away from it. And I don't know if that was, um, it was a rebellious time when I wanted to be independent. And I feel bad now that me and my friend who kind of tricked me into going to the Navy, um, we didn't tell our parents at all. And I feel bad because they were so shocked and didn't even have time to process when the recruiters came and picked us up five in the morning. It was time to go during the Navy. I, it, it wasn't um, all pleasant. I grew up pretty fast, um, but I wouldn't change it for anything because I, because because of the Navy, I knew what I wanted to do, you know, and, and, and I thought, I think I already knew what I wanted to do, but I, I, I buckled down even more and, and there's nothing's going to stop me, I think. Um, and nothing actually after the Navy, nothing phases me after that. Annalisa Francisco and I am Anthony Francisco's wife. The first time we met, uh, I was um, I was with my friends. They went. They had to go to. Um, I think it was her boyfriend's um, birthday, and I end up going with them. And we, it was like in Riverside. I, yeah, Riverside and. That's where I first met him. He was, a bunch of his friends were talking about him and I was really interested, like, who's this Anthony? He kept talking and how they're saying how buff he is <laughs> and stuff like that. So there's just very interesting things about him. And then I was just, and then when he got there, I was, I was, I think I was already interested who, who's this guy. So yeah, that's the first time we met. <laughs> I didn't notice uh, Lisa there. Um, and she's like a good friend of uh, one of the girlfriends of one of my friends, other friends. And um, she danced really well when we were dancing and I love to dance. And I think that's how we kind of got more uh, attracted to each other because we're both 
Supposedly we're both really good dancers, that's what our friends tell us. So that's why they were pairing us up because they knew she loved to dance and they knew I loved to dance. So that's how, uh, I think that's how the, the matchup came to be. He was just uh, starting with, um, when I first met him, he was still a student and he, he told me he wanted to be an artist. He's an aspiring artist. And I was like, what's that? <laughs> you know? Like, what's an artist? I mean, I, I know you draw and all this thing, but I've always known artists as a, he draw cartoons, comics, and stuff like that. And really, that's it. I didn't really know what an artist, artist is. And people always say it's artist, it's not a career for you to really go to. So it's, I didn't think of it as anything also. I just thought of it as a hobby for him at the beginning. Are you ready to meet the couple? For the very first time, Mr. and Mrs. Anthony Francisco. So me and my spouse, Elisa, we have been together for 24 years now. Um, she was there from the beginning of my career. Um, even before when I was still just dreaming of, of the career. Oh, let me get this. I'm always tearing up whenever we talk about this stuff. Because um, again, it's, it's tears of joy really and gratefulness is, is what I feel every time uh, I think about it. Because it's hard to be with an artist really. I've never met anybody like him. Like he, like everything he says, he said if he's gonna do it, there's no doubt that he's gonna do it. You know, he's that type of person. I am delusional with how good I could be even though I wasn't good enough yet. Uh, I just still had that dream, that vision. The part that really is I'm grateful for is that she never left me <laughs> for my selfishness. Because I had a goal. <laughs> when Anthony is doing a project that is definitely very um, like deadline time for their projects and things like that. It, it's always never uh, eight to five hours. It's more than that. It's like working morning to night time. And sometimes he forgets to eat, you know, you, and that's where I come in, you know, you remind him he eats lunchtime, you take a break first, quick, you know, quick bites here and there. And, you know, and, and stuff like that, but it's always um, it's just focus. It's always, um, but he always has time, you know, even though it's always busy, it's always a crunch time in their deadlines and stuff like that. He always has time for us. And I think that's the one thing that I, that we love about him, that he always make time. I'm currently waiting for approvals on the characters I've been designing. Um, it's really a, a tough approval process and the struggle of designing something new is, is just a, a, an ongoing um, struggle. I end up going to the school called Associates in Art and that is one of the best schools for me because it's like a, it's like a vocational school I guess where uh, what's amazing about it is professionals taught and if I could learn from professionals already why go to a four-year college which was I was planning on doing but I had no money either so I had to be self-reliant resourceful um, and in drawing 
anybody can do it. You just need paper and pencil and draw down your ideas. Um, and, and with me, my focus was on designing was my main thing because I couldn't render and my pencil sketches were sort of um, not quite all there yet, but I, I was getting better. Okay, yeah, this is something I put together. Uh, one of my friends uh, just really pushed me to put out my own art book when I had a gallery show in Taiwan. Here is um, my uh, Balite tree monster. This this is the version of Ego when he was forming himself into from the plant into a person. And this is what I came up with and it, it became James Gunn's uh, uh, favorite for for the look, I guess, of the character. So this teacher had an open house in his school and since I'm one of the students, I was in that open house and he had some industry professionals there and one person owned a special effects studio called ADI. And ADI is the studio that uh, worked on Alien vs. Predator, um, Starship Troopers, um, and, and Spider-Man with Sam Raimi. So I was waiting in the sidelines, waiting for my turn to speak. Uh, but my friend was very excited, very passionate, so he was the only one talking to him. And Alec Gillis, the owner of ADI, one of the owners, he, I'm glad he noticed me and said, Hey, are you also an artist? I am grateful he he took that opportunity to know who I am and because of that kind gesture from now on from that time on I always look behind other people and uh, behind the person who's talking to me when I'm in a class and try to give everyone an opportunity to ask their question because I was that guy I was that guy behind almost didn't get a chance uh, to, to speak um, but when he talked to me, he asked me if I had a portfolio. And that time I had no portfolio. And I just said, yes, I do have a portfolio. It's currently being looked at at Art Center. This page right here was when I first started my career. I, I was not working anywhere yet. I would send this out to different special effects shops to see if they'd pick me up. And this is my design for Men in Black um, uh, 2, the shark character. I started doing my portfolio, but after a few weeks, I didn't get a call back. So then I was like worried that they weren't interested anymore. And this is the part I tell students, uh, other artists most of the time is, this is when you make false narratives in your head thinking that they don't want to use you anymore or, or, or they were just being fake or all this stuff. And then you end up doing nothing and, and somehow, I was able to say, you know what, I, I can't let this pass. Let me call them and find out what the real answer is. Instead of telling myself, oh, they don't want me to do it, and, and something that's not real. So the day came when I, when I came to uh, visit him at ADI and I had my portfolio ready. It was nice and clean and in a nice portfolio case. Um, and then I show it to him and he goes through it and, and it doesn't seem like he's impressed. It's like, oh, okay, this is all nice, but there's some figure drawing, figure drawing images in there, which, and they're all in pencil. Nothing was painted yet because I didn't know how to use uh, Photoshop that well yet. And I would, that's when you could tell with body language that, oh, not, not so, the reaction was not exactly what I thought. Um, you know, but then he asked if I had my sketchbooks with me and luckily I had brought my sketchbooks, so I took my, his sketchbooks out and then he looked through it and that's when he liked my ideas so I had notes and different head shapes of aliens and different reasoning why this alien would act this way or different combinations of animals to make a certain alien and uh, and, and that's when when he was like this is great but yeah from 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 him looking at my sketchbook he it was really impressed uh, it seemed like and he hired me on the spot when can I start so I started the next week
from the moment I saw Iron Man, the first one, that's when I knew Marvel finally are capable of making their comics into real amazing movies. And that's when I thought, you know, I would love to work at Marvel someday. And I guess that that idea, that visualization has been there for a while until the moment they needed a creature designer for Guardians of the Galaxy 1, which is my first break into uh, coming into that um, that film. And it happens that one of my friends is leading it, which is Charlie Wen. So he brought me in to design aliens and creatures and eventually keyframes. The producers and directors really um, reacted favorably. So my three weeks became eight years. So they got me to work full time uh, as a staff member. And that's when you know I started working on Doctor Strange and, and Thor Ragnarok, and then there's just there's, there's so much multiple movies that came after that, uh, and they were all kind of memorable and challenging in their own way. Have you guys seen this? This is my Mordor design for Mordor Doctor Strange. I actually helped get the look for Doctor Strange, the initial design for Doctor Strange. Making these kind of movies requires huge teams and multiple teams to create something amazing, you know, for the audience to watch. Uh, but people behind the scenes uh, don't usually get uh, recognition and there's so many people out there that um, that we owe our um, like we owe the job that we do you know as, as well as the fans giving giving that kind of attention to us and I really appreciate that and sometimes it's also really nice when other people of your peers that recognize you and even mention you. So I'm, I'm really appreciative that Ruth Carter uh, is able to mention me uh, when she talks about the Dora Milaje. The Dora Milaje was uh, drawn by Anthony Francesco of Marvel's Visual Development Department. And I feel like it, it was a collaborative effort. We use beadwork from you know, many tribal areas of Africa. Ryan really wanted the armor to feel like jewelry. They're Neck rings are from the Indabele tribe of South Africa. So there were a lot of elements to this costume, wouldn't you say? You know, um, and uh, you know, she, she had been able to create something amazing um, based on my designs. And um, that's, that's, that's a, 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 a collaboration that's very important in the kind of stuff we do. Making it in America means that I endured so much hardship, pushed myself. Uh, uh, you don't sit down and make it in America just sitting in your couch, you know? Um, making it in America is, 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 is kind of um, keeping that dream alive and pushing and working hard to your best of your ability because you're in a, in, in a place of opportunity. Um, and I feel like my uh, my belief in myself and, and and the delusion of of wanting to do art for happiness it, it, it became my idea of making it in America. I'm just trying to make it in America. So when I was designing for WandaVision, I, I, I was tasked with designing the battle between Vision and regular Vision. And, uh, just like, hello? Cool, yes. That's, that's cool, lucky. It's my lucky year. Actually, it is my lucky year. That was just Marvel, and they told me I got, you know, I, I got some major stuff approved. I can't say, but man, it's it's gonna be, 
You guys, ah, oh, congratulations, man! <laughs> I can't even say what it is, but yeah, it's 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 gonna be crazy, actually. Oh man! Congrats, man. <laughs> That's amazing. It's huge. It's huge. Uh, but I don't want to spoil it for you guys. When you watch it, you'll see what I'm talking about. But ah, uh, <laughs> yeah.